tonight. It is uh, Focus TV straight to the point. Morning break focus, but now it's election 2017 extended. I am joined by Jeremiah today, this morning, and uh, he is a political commentator and also a politician. Now, Jeremiah Karibu Sana. Yes. Just uh, probably tell us what is your feel about uh, the long weekend, as it may be. Uh, we're calling it the long weekend because it started with a holiday on Wednesday. People went to the polls on Thursday. Friday, I'm told many people take holiday as well. And uh, here we are today. What would you say? What is your take on what has actually transpired on the, la uh, on the last few days? Um, it's true it's been a long weekend. But uh, weekend where the Kenyan now get to know a real patriot mm -hmm. and who are the enemies of this nation. It is a weekend that was a decision time where Kenyans have made decisions on who and how they want to be governed. We've seen uh, and we've uh, realized uh, that uh, we had uh, one of the, uh, the things which is anchored in the constitution holding an election. And uh, apart from Wednesday and Thursday, most Kenyans went back to work on Friday. Uh, Saturday, most Kenyans went to work, those who work. And yesterday, others went to church. Mm -hmm. So it's only a few. And I'll avoid saying idlers and militias. Eh? It's only a few who have nothing to do still waiting to see Kenya burning. But apart from that, some events, we've seen some things happening. And uh, we will say, uh, mm, it's my prayer that the long weekend ends today. Mm -hmm. And we start a new process. And we start a new process. Uh, you've said the people who are waiting for Kenya to burn. Is Kenya burning? Kenya is not burning. OK. Only some regions are burning. Would we say they're really burning? No, they're not burning. Mm -hmm. They've agreed to be misused by a perennial loser. OK. OK, OK, OK. Uh, probably just uh, to go back to uh, the election process, what are the figures? The? What are the figures? Uh, I'm looking at seven point. Actually, by yesterday night, I think I saw 7.5, mm -hmm. which is a good figure, which is 98. Okay, president, uh, the deputy president also confirmed that in an interview with an international station that uh, it was 7.5. That was with CNN. Yes. 24 hours later, uh, we know the chairman, uh, ABC, has been back and forth uh, with uh, the figures. But then yesterday evening, they actually confirmed, yes, it's now at 7.5. Yes. Don't you think that this now gives the opponent an upper hand in declaring or saying that IEBC has been infiltrated by the government, considering that uh, the deputy president points out to a figure and uh, later on is confirmed by IEBC? He, the, the deputy president was not giving a figure that based on what he thinks. The deputy president was giving a figure based on number one, we have, a, I believe Jubilee has a chief agent in the name of David Chichil mm -hmm. at, at the National Talent Center. Uh, and the figures, these are figures that came from uh, the IEBC. And uh, I don't think the chairman would have uh, gone again ahead and uh, disputed his own figures. So at the end of the day, uh, these are figures that came from IBC and not from Jubilee. OK, uh, just to take you back, because uh, we need to really clear this. Uh, we've seen the chairman come publicly and declaring some figures. Uh, like he started off by saying an, uh, about 48% voter turnout. He later on clarified on his Twitter and uh, private Twitter and And he said it was about 6.5 million voters. However, we are now looking at uh, a figure of 7.5 that is later after even the deputy president had said it. And that's why my question is, didn't you think that builds the narrative by the opponent or the opposition of the NASA coalition saying that IEBC is not independent as it were? Uh, at that time, uh, when he was giving that figure was almost immediately after voting and all that. And what he was relying was on the, 
what was keyed in the kids, the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they were reporting were, and what they said, we, 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 we will even seek more clarification. And that, at that time, he never gave the exact figures. Mm -hmm. uh, because in the first place, he had given 48%. And, uh, but, but later on, you know, you receive information from, 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 from the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is okay to clarify and say, this is, and this is what happened. Because I, I know BBC was reporting at 26, is it either 27.6 or 26.7? And uh, then they gave 30%. But that was what had already been keyed in. Okay. So uh, when, when they continue uh, receiving results, these figures kept changing. Because uh, it is not that if, if here, this region, we vote 10%, and the other region votes, because I know of regions like Moranga, which voted 90%. Okay. So it will change. The that will be a higher percentage than August 8th? Yes. Okay. So the, when, when the results comes in, and what you had received are results of areas that voted, uh, the, the voter turnout was low, and the ones for regions which voted high, then the percentage and the numbers keep on keeps on changing, mm -hmm. so it's okay. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with the, with the change of figures because unless 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 NASA wanted us to still maintain at twenty six point, which is not possible, they would still have said if it remained at twenty six, they would have said the system was hacked. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I don't know what what would you say. Uh, with these voter turnout. You see, from other quarters, they say repeat elections would always register a low voter turnout. But then uh, from this election, you're seeing some regions actually reporting that they have a higher voter turnout than the first election. Uh, the main reason where we have some region voting high is because there are people who feel uh, the Supreme Court denied our candidate uh, his win. So we are coming out in large numbers to rubber stamp what we did on mm -hmm. August 8th. Mm -hmm. There are some other regions where there was tension, huh? and there are some voters uh, who I know of uh, some people, I don't want to mention regions and the, 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 the person, but I know of someone who went and even requested IBC not to mark his finger. He wants to vote, but he is not safe going home. With, 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 with the with, ink, with the ink, mm -hmm. because of obvious reasons. So uh, the regions that voted, the region that boycotted, was to rubber stamp that uh, our candidate won, and our candidate has said we we have no election. Mm -hmm. The region that uh, registered high numbers, it was about rubber stamping what they did on August State. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, when I look at all the the the, 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 the entire election. Uh, Mm, number one, it has met the constitutional threshold. And number two, uh, apart from four counties, uh, 43 counties actually held their elections and the election was peaceful. So it's only four counties, which we need to think and ask ourselves what we need to do with them after this. Okay, fine. Uh, speaking of the four counties, IABC uh, is set to declare uh, the election results and uh, even declare uh, the president as the president-elect in these uh, uh, repeat elections. What does that say now for these four counties that have not participated in the poll? Uh, I will say something that is a little bit controversial here, yeah, that now these four counties, they need to sit together and call themselves to a meeting and ask themselves what they need to do. I've always said this. The leader of NASA comes from one of the four counties that didn't hold an election. And he has been a leader in that region for very long. I think it is about members of these four counties. Most of them are, okay, and, and I'm not being tribal. Uh, we now no longer need him to lead a dialogue, national dialogue. We need him to call some of us who will be willing to help, call some of our elders from our regions, and we do what we call Luo National Dialogue. Mm -hmm. sit down and actually analyze ever since it independent we've always found ourselves fighting every government okay does it mean that ours is to rebel Kikuyus have fought government 
and supported governments. Kalenjins have support, fought governments, supported governments. All our regions, all other regions, leaders have come and left. If you go to Kalenjin, they had Moi. The, now they have William. Gideon is coming up. If you go to Luyaland, we have Mudavadi and others. I think there is a problem now. And the biggest problem is on one thing. Someone is holding them ransom. Someone is using them for you know, business. Not uh, which, uh, when we talk about that, because uh, I'll uh, take you back, uh, the deputy president also uh, allegedly said, or rather he alleged to the fact that the militias were used to actually stop elections from happening in these four counties. But then uh, who organizes or who arms? Are they armed? Are they, what, what exactly are we talking about militia? Because if you understand militia, it has to be, it is an organized group. Yes. Does it mean that they have power over the government? Uh, one day before the election, someone converted national Super Alliance to NASA resistant movement. And when you have a resistant movement, it means the, 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 the leader of the resistant movement becomes the rebel leader or the militia leader. So his actions before the election actually proved that he is a leader. Now he is no longer a national leader. But he's a leader. Actually, he reduced himself to the level of Joseph Kony of Uganda, where now he wants to lead a militia. And these people, the reason why militia, the, 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 one of the main reasons why they came to the streets and do that was so that the government, they can provoke the police to shoot them dead, so that they can have a ground for a case at the ICC. And, 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 and it, 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 it's a little bit funny that, 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 that a Kenyan can actually agree to go to the street, be sacrificed, die, so that your leader can take someone to the ICC. It's a shame. And that's what then, I'm saying. Okay, 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 if, these the, are, the only mm -hmm. reason why we say they are militias, anyone mm -hmm. who comes with a rory full of stones, blocks in the road, someone, I saw some coming with welding machines, and blocking, putting metal bars on the road, that to me was an organized thing because how do you get a welding machine from, from the house and a generator to the road when there was no one coordinating? We need now, and I'm asking this government, after, after the swearing in, the president needs to act very fast and at all means and everything possible, crack down on the militia and their leaders, arrest them, charge them, mm -hmm. take them to court. If possible, we had the Sabaot Land Defense Forces. We know what their leaders were done. I believe this government has guns enough. We have enough arms to work and to protect Kenyans. I want to feel... But this militia, this militia as, uh, as uh, was alleged by the deputy president, they only arm themselves with rocks and stones? Uh, but we know they also attacked police stations with a view of uh, stealing guns from the armory. Okay, fine. Still about this grouping. What is your take on... Uh, we've, seen, we've seen groups like MRC come back and even be able to declare their support for the presidential poll and everything. We all know what is the history of MRC. We also had uh, a group that was even donning in military uniform in the name of Nairobi Business Community. I don't know, what is your take? Does it become legal when it's pro-government and illegal when it's anti-government? Uh, I saw the four guys. It is not a whole group that donned in military attire. And uh, actually, this was not, the uniform they had was not the uniform of our military. Because this was not a jungle green which we use. Eh? This was, uh, if you looked at the uniform, is what, it's what uh, the US Navy. Marines and mm -hmm. the, the Marines. Yes. Not, not. And these are, it's like me today. I'm here supporting the president and I walk outside somewhere in a shop. I buy combat. 
Does that mean that I want to cause violence? No, these are four people who are taking advantage of the situation, dressed up that way, and uh, with an intention of sending a message that we are ready to protect the government, which is nothing wrong. As long as... How do, you, how, how, how do civilians protect the government? Uh, this is one thing. Either by, you know, you know, if you look at the Constitution Article 1, uh, if I realize, you know, these, these, these are the wing of, 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 of the, 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 the NASA. They had said that we now no longer want to act. Uh, uh, we want to, to take power and, and act and exercise the authority directly. And that exercising directly means uh, you're provoking the government. Mm -hmm. Me also from the other end, I feel I need to, to show I also have a right because the same same constitution you're using is the same same one I'm using. Uh, I don't know why people are not use, looking at the Baghdad boys from Kisumu who are part of this. I don't know why people are not looking at even this group from Kayole that I have seen it being incorporated by the likes of Simba Lati. Uh, there was a photo of some young men and numbers circulating that this is a group that, uh, that, that, that that's being used by a certain member of parliament uh, to uh, crack down on Jubilee supporters in Kangore. I don't know why the leaders of NASA are not coming say we will present and we will arrest the criminals we are hiding so that you can also present your criminals. No, but you see, it is the role of the government or the role of the person in power to actually make sure that they protect the, uh, the citizen. Perfect. It is not their role for them to actually bring out the criminals and uh, present to the government. I will tell you one thing. And that is why I'm saying, I'm looking forward to Uhuru Kenyatta as the commander in chief to protect me because mm -hmm. I feel, and, and I'm saying this without fear of contradiction, that um, should the government feel that the militias have become so strong, we will request the government to allow us to arm ourselves. No, wait a minute, wait, 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 Jeremiah. You see, I think that is now building the narrative to violence. Not what we are really trying to walk away from. Not violence, not violence. I cannot allow you to keep on coming to my house every day. You are we, slap, are we, are we you saying, are we saying, okay, the reason, the, reason why, the reason why I'm saying that, are we saying that the government has failed to protect its citizens the to the extent that you would say you would want you failed. to be armed? The government has not failed. Yes. The government is being lenient and the government has worked. Actually, whatever we expected bloodshed would, would have been worse. The government has performed. Which means there is no need for any Kenyan to actually arm themselves. No, what we are saying is this. It is a, it is a warning shot we are sending to the leader of the militia. That, uh, and I will say this. Peace is not the absence of war. I think Kenyans need to know that. The absence of war does not mean peace. So, just because we are going around thinking we have peace, it does not mean it's the absence of war. No. And we will not postpone issues. We will square them out. No, as a, as a commentator and as a politician, as a, as a leader, what would you say we should actually do as a nation? Probably now, looking at the government, what, is, what should be the priority? Should, uh, and it will be announced, uh, he will be announced as president, President Uru Kenyatta, what would you say should be his first agenda? His first agenda is to bring the nation together as a symbol of national unity. Uh, he needs to uh, reach out to members of the opposition. He needs to call Laila Molodinga for a cup of tea, not with an intention of uh, sharing in the power. Asking him now, you as the leader of the opposition, oh, what input do you want me to do. Uh, he needs to reach out to Kenyans and he needs now so that Kenyans can continue, Kenya can continue on its development agenda mm -hmm. because we've had this situation of politics for too long. Uh, secondly, let him not wait until things spill. He needs to act. 
the security apparatus need to act to protect Kenyans. Um, we need actually legal minds to tell us whether the, the, the NAM or the NASA resistant movement is a legal body because if it is no, it's an illegal body, we, there needs to be a crackdown, not with an intention of punishing the, the opposition leaders, but with an intention of protecting Kenyans from harming themselves because we can destroy this nation because of a few leaders. So we need to protect this nation from a few power hungry leaders. And I've always said this, the presidency is not a reserve of Laila Molo Odinga and Uru Mwai Kenyatta. Tomorrow it will be me. The other day it will be someone else. And uh, there are sometimes even, 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 even someone said that uh, it is foolish. You'll be counted as a fool if you keep on doing things the same way and each time expecting different results. So right now I think uh, th there is one statement that was used by Raila Moroding sometimes back about the one bullet movement. Having sensed that he's already used his one bullet, now he wants to use Kalonzo's bullet and Wetangula's bullet and Mudavadi's bullet to mess up this nation. So Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta call these people and uh, this, this time round we don't want a Serena agreement. Call them and tell them I'm the president. In fact, he should invite them for the swearing in and give them an opportunity to address the nation during the swearing in. But then they are not talking about swearing in. They are uh, listening to Raila Amolo Dinga yesterday. He still maintained that they are Raise need to call for another election within 90 days. Um, I think Raida has a problem. Not I think, I'm sure. Raida is a man who is suffering from depression. Most of the things he's saying to me, they don't make sense. They don't make sense at all. Because how do you call an election? Who are you? In okay, the first place, who are you? Now, because the elections are conducted by IBC. The reason why Raida is saying they need an election is because they want, they want, they want to ensure that uh, they make this country ungovernable, call in the international community. Again, like the 2008, they come, they do, they do, they do a new constitution, they set a new electoral body, we get to the election, which to me, it is not about Kenyans. Today, and, 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 and my viewers will, will bear me witness, with a Raira presidency, with a Kalonzo presidency, with an Uhuru Kenyatta presidency, to, 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 to most Kenyans it doesn't matter. Actually, even most Kenyans in Luanyanza want Uhuru to be sworn in, okay? So that they can continue with their work. Is it about just wanting to go back to normalcy? Yes. And we should uh, get this. Laira Odinga is not a politician. After this, he's a after, businessman. After this, after 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 his swearing in, uh, do you think there are is need to revisit probably our systems and uh, revisit uh, the composition of the structures within the IABC? Do you think there is need for us to reevaluate and uh, probably change a few things about our constitution? On August eighth, we went to the polls and elected two hundred and ninety representatives and 47 senators. Their work is simple, to legislate. So if there are issues of changing the electoral laws, if there are issues of changing system, all parties involved must give their views to members of parliament and allow them to change the laws. These it, it, could be, it could be argued that uh, going with the numbers, probably there will still be a bias no, to I'll which... Give you, I'll give you where this issue of Laila Odinga doesn't work. In 1992, we came up after, after the petition for multi-partism and all that. We uh, surpassed parliament and guys sat down and started an election, uh, a group. Did it work? No. In 1997, they realized the same and they started IPPG. They sat down somewhere outside parliament, 
uh, agreed on issues, and now they said, this one, Mwai Kibaki will win. Did it work? No. After 1997, they started again an agitation. 1998, they started singing uh, again the same song they were singing in December 1997, no reforms, no election. We came to 2007. Did it work? After bringing in guys out sitting in Serena and mis misusing our money? No. They still went to parliament and formed a government, and guys began the same story of I was not consulted. After that, we've come back to just a few, should be last year, the, 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 the blue whistle sat on Tamak, and a few guys, they brought in Orengo and Kiraito Murungi and said, these are the best brains we have. They went to Insa Hotel, sat down, agreed among themselves, and went back to parliament and I said, we have the best, the best electoral laws. Okay? Now again, the same guys are saying, what we did was not the best. We need to sit down again. I think Kenyans must realize this, that our leaders, we must force our leaders to either respect the constitution or used, use the legal means of changing the same constitution, which is parliament, not streets. Right now, Raila Amolo Odinga said, we cannot go. What, 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 what miracles will it give him about numbers. He needs to reach out. Actually, if he is a good leader, I know there are members of Jubilee who will agree with him when he says, let's change ABCD. So he needs to reach out. He, he needs to call members of the Jubilee. Tell them, this is not about me, it's about the nation. Let's change this constitution. Let him be a gentleman. The only reason why they don't would listen it, to would him. That be, wouldn't that be what he was trying to do with the irreducible minimums? His reducible minimums were illegal because they were not taken to parliament. His reducible minimums were done in the streets. Presented we, the know, we don't change the law in the streets. We change the law in parliament, not in the streets. So it is either he decides he's going to parliament and he has members of parliament from NASA present uh, his reducible minimum and let them present them to the National Assembly for okay. consideration. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Do you see a situation whereby we might find ourselves going back to the court after these polls or after the announcements today? Yes, I know. And I know already they are petitioners. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, uh, we'll see, wait, they will, they will, after, after today, we we'll have 14 days, mm -hmm. file the petition, then let's, let's wait and hear what uh, the Chief Justice will say. Actually, to me, the Chief Justice gave this thing a clean bill of. Because if he knew this thing was unconstitutional, he couldn't have gone to vote. He voted. Okay, fine. Him voting because does, not, no, him voting no does not legitimize no the process. I'm looking at the Chief Justice sitting with someone who did not vote and he voted and listening to him talking about the voting process. I think that would be, it, it would be interesting. You see, uh, him voting does not necessarily legitimize the, the process. It doesn't, huh? But at least he... Neither does it, but, neither, uh, neither does it immune the but, IABC but him, from any responsibility. But someone responsibility. who withdrew from an election, coming to petition about the same election does not make sense. Mm -hmm. Does not make sense. I'll expect a petition from Akuru Akot, Mwali Mudida, Akaluyu, Jirongo, or a voter. Okay. Uh, yesterday, uh, Actually, Pasaris went even ahead. Esther Pasari is the women representative of Nairobi. Went even ahead to use uh, the acronym of JBC, not IEBC. She said it's JEBC. In other words, it's Jubilee <laughs> Electoral, okay, and Boundaries Commission. Now, uh, still going back to the process, and even as we're looking at things going to court, with that probability, going back to Akombe's confessions, coming back to uh, Chebukati's statement just before the election, and uh, what they would say as the back and forth with the figures that he's given. Don't you think that those are loopholes or the grounds that could actually lead to another annulment? Okay, the first thing, uh, let, me, let me just, before I answer that, and say uh, any serious Kenyan will not take Esther Pasaris seriously. This is the end of the month. Okay? You need to go to the, 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 the Parliamentary Service Commission and ask whether she's taken her salary. And you realize 
she was elected using what she's call a, calling a float election, huh? mm -hmm. but she's earning salary. So she, she's a con woman. And, and I will say that without fear of contradiction. If she was, a, she was real, she would have said, I will not be part of this and I have resigned, or I will not take my salary mm -hmm. until the issues are solved. Mm -hmm. So we should not take, look at, look at Akobe. Akobe, as I said, she, 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 she was another one. Huh? What she wanted to do was to mess up the name of the nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have not seen the international community talk about Akobe. Meaning, they forgot, she, they even forgot she resigned. Would we say forgot or is just to wait and see if... Uh... No, they would have said Akobe raised serious issues eh, that needs to be addressed. Everyone knows Akobe was raising nothing. 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 She was, she was someone's spy at the IBC. And when she realized that uh, the, what she's earning, is, 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 she, she's not delivering, she had to quit and use other reasons. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, Akobe should not be taken serious and everyone should ignore her. Okay, I think we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, remember, you are watching Focus TV. It's election 2017, even as we await the official announcement of the results. And uh, not only the announcement of the results, but also starting to see what would shape up in terms of the nation or the state of the nation. Uh, we'll take a short break. When I return, we'll also be joined by another guest and we continue to put things into perspective just to try and see how is the state of our nation. Don't go away. Looking for an affordable and secure piece of land? Jikatia Investments are here for you. We have lands in Matu with an acre going for 700,000 shillings, half an acre at 350,000 shillings, and an eighth ranging from 70,000 shillings to 150,000 shillings. We have lands in Murera, Juja Farm, and Bypass with prices ranging from 300,000 shillings to 4 million shillings. Just deposit 50%, pay the rest in three months, and the land is as good as yours. Our lands are in areas that have water, good roads, schools, electricity, security, and health facilities. You can visit us at Ruiru Town, Madigu Road, Gitwamba Plaza, opposite Doctors Plaza, third floor room L13, or call us on 0722 404 or 0722 888-681 Take this opportunity and grab your piece of land now. Do you own a business, an organization, or an institution? Focus TV gives you a platform to take your products and services to the next level by offering you the best introductory offer of 9 inserts per day for 7 days a week at a very affordable rate to reach your customer right at their living room. You can call us on 0717-969660. Book your slot today. Would you like to market your products or services of your company to the whole world? Then Fans Publishers is here to deliver what you need. We offer embroidery services in corporate shirts, polo shirts, caps, and many more. Fans Publishers is located in Retail House, 5th floor along Kwame Nkrumah Street in Thika Town. You can also contact us on 0717-969660 or email us at fanspublishers at gmail.com. Fans Publishers, we are what you need. Have you
you been applying for jobs without much success or seeking greener pastures and need to create the best impression in the employer's mind to get a job? This is the best time to get a professional CV. MyDreamCV.com are experts in professional CV writing in Kenya. You can now rely on our 15 years experience writing professional CVs, resumes and cover letters to clients in US, Canada, UK, Australian and Kenyan markets. Our rates are super affordable. Beginner CV writing goes for 1,000 Kenya shillings with less than 3 years experience. Middle career CV goes for 2,000 Kenya shillings with 3 to 10 years working experience. Senior CV goes for 3,000 Kenya shillings and cover letters for 500 Kenya shillings. Don't be left out lamenting over lack of employment. Call us today on 0720-079413 and start the journey to your dream job. Are you looking for the best school for your child? Search no more. Blue Ribbon Allied School offers quality education. We have highly qualified staff well-equipped computers, scientific laboratories, e-learning and ultra-modern facilities. We offer computer, French and Chinese lessons. You can call us on 0708-990439 or 0726-109481. You can also email us at Blue Ribbon Allied School at yahoo.com. Hurry now. Intake in progress. Blue Ribbon Allied School. Hard work brings honor. Keridam Dental Clinic offers services like teeth alignment, teeth replacement, teeth whitening, dental filling, braces, and many more dental services. Visit us today in Thika Town, Biashara Plaza, opposite Equity Plaza, next to Naiva Supermarket. Nairobi Town, we are located at Norwich Mall, opposite Hilton Hotel. For more information, call us on 0797-664766 or 0704-477100. Welcome to Keridam Dental Clinic. Kwa makala kwa mavu ya kweli misha, kufamisha na kuburudisha. Tazama kipindi cha mviringo wa riziki. Upate mwanga ujue jinsi ya kuchimba riziki. Ungana nae mwanabari wetu Joa Shonsari kila siku ya juma sa kuminambili na nusu jioni. Mviringo wa riziki, msingi wa maisha. Do you have an inspirational story? Have you been through pain, anger, heartbreaks, hopelessness, disappointments, and victory? The program Scars of Life gives you an opportunity to share your story. Sharing is the beginning of healing. Join Nemo Mugo every Thursday, 8 p.m. only on Focus TV. Changing scars to stars. Get an all round hands on experience in broadcast and digital media as a refresher or industrial training in camera work, editing, digital transmission, show presenting and anchoring, show production and directing, graphic design and motion graphic. It's not just training, but a launch pad to your career. For more information, call us on 0725360579. Don't miss out. Registration is ongoing. Burudani Bomba. Ziki Mnene Ndania Focus TV. Ikipeperushwa na kikingi mwenyewe muite vizivi na kwenye santuri ni DJ A+. Kila siku kutoka yuma tatu, hadi alhamisi. Sa kumina moja unusu jioni, hadi kumina mbili unusu. Ziki mneni. Mara black, mara white, vipi. Kama unatikisa kibiriti. Ziki mneni.
Right, we are back and uh, you are watching our edition, uh, Focus TV edition, election 2017. And uh, like I promised earlier, I'm now joined by engineer Otieno, who also joins us on set. Remember, I was earlier with uh, Jeremiah, who is still with us. So Jeremiah and engineer Otieno, again, we continue with this discussion and Karibu sana. Yes, now, we are back to our discussion and uh, even as we wait for the official announcement. First of all, probably, let me just get uh, from you. What would you say about the figures on and the turnout on the uh, 26th? Uh, well, thank you very much, my brother. Um, this repeat election had several issues right from the beginning. Uh, just about a week to the election, one of the commissioners resigns, uh, Dr. Rosalina Nakombe. And uh, in her resignation note, uh, she states a lot of things that should have been a great eye-opener to the general public on the state of preparedness of the IABC to conduct a presidential election that would have the credibility test. Uh, shortly after that, the chairman of the IABC comes and he says, uh, technically, the IABC is ready, meaning we have the ballot boxes, we have the ballot papers and everything. But he cannot guarantee a credible election under the prevailing conditions because of the political temperatures and the political uh, inversion and involvement. Uh -huh. um, finally, now after we have the activity that happened on the 26th, I'm really afraid to call it an election and I just want to be forgiven for that. But after that activity, uh, several days later, we've seen the confusion, the nature of confusion in explaining what statisticians would just call turnout. And up to now, there's a lot of conflict. Yet, anybody who is in Kenya, you and me, we were in Kenya on the day of the 26th of um, October, the turnout was as obvious as dew on grass in the morning. We are playing around 27 to 30%. Uh -huh. would, would, would that be your position? I don't know. Uh, the tally from other quarters would put it at 7.48. Uh, that is 98%. Uh, that is uh, President Kenyatta getting 7.48. And uh, reloading at 73,000. Akuro Court 21, uh, Dida 14, Kaluyu 8,000, uh, Maura 6,000. Basically, we are talking about a figure close to 7.6, uh, just as uh, it was released by uh, the, pre uh, the deputy president earlier on an interview with CNN, only to be uh, again echoed by the IABC commission later. Actually, it said 24 hours later. I don't know, listening to him, I don't know what you have to say about what he calls confusion. Is there really confusion in trying to get the actual figures, or is it as clear as it could be? There is no confusion. The only confusion that is, it's a creation of a people who did not participate in the election. Mm -hmm. I'll give someone what someone said. You, there is no way you drop out from three, and still want to say on the credibility of a KCSE exam, and you dropped class at form three. Someone dropped from the race and said, "I'm not participating." So they should allow those who participated to question the numbers. I have not had a court question the numbers. I have not had Kaluyu question the numbers. And even the person who participated, I have not had him question his 72,000 votes that he's already gotten. Because there are 72,000 voters who did not boycott, mm -hmm. who actually exercised their democratic right to go and vote for, for, for a person they knew had already withdrawn. But because they believed in him, they went still ahead and voted. So. The, the issue of uh, the numbers not matching is not coming from the people who participated in this election. So it is coming mm -hmm. from 
quarters. Would, would it be right? Uh, to participate. Would it be right for for for, for you to uh, for us rather to believe that NASA has no right to question the numbers because they did not participate in the process? That is what you're trying to say. They don't have any right. Really? They don't have any right to question you the numbers. You have a right to question. They the don't numbers. have any right to question the numbers for one reason. They don't have an agent at the Bomber's Darling Center. Mm -hmm. Their chief agent is somewhere in Kawangware inciting locals. Okay, that, those are allegations that... They are not uh, allegations. Can you substantiate that? Yes. Where is your evidence? Please. That is Yesterday he was there saying they will not recognize the president. We will do another election. That is charging the masses and giving them wrong information. Because we will not have a repeat election. The next election will be on August 8th, 2022. Okay. Okay, maybe to get a rebuttal on that. I could say something. <clears throat> the numbers that you have read here, uh, where President Uhuru had 7.4 million and then uh, a bit of uh, 500,000 has been shared. Uh, no, is it even 500? I think it's one Almost about. About, about 100,000 has been shared <laughs> among the others. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, um, I, I would like uh, my good brother Jeremiah here to understand that we withdrew from this election. We did not boycott. We withdrew because this was a setup. Nobody goes to the uh, football pitch, for those who love football, knowing very well that your opponent and the referee have already fixed the match. Mm -hmm. They have already decided the outcome of the match. Then what are you going to do in that match? Unless you have rocks in your head, it is not possible to do that. And um, when uh, uh, the former Prime Minister, Raila Molodinga, drew from this race, it was to push the system to establish a proper electoral system, mm -hmm. which is what this country deserves, not what we just had. But right now, back to the figures that you've just read. Yes. We, as NASA supporters, myself as uh, uh, engineer Fred Otieno, I was in Malindi as from the 25th, in my own capacity as a citizen, to see how the residents of Malindi are going to turn out <laughs> to, 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 to celebrate the president's birthday. And uh, uh, the, the figures are out there. I've been looking at the IBC portal uh, to see when the kind of results that are coming from Malindi, it is, it, is, it is outrageous. We are all here. We are still all Kenyans. We have the right to question everything that is done in this country where taxpayers' money is spent. Close to 12 billion has been spent on this election. And that is my money. That's your money, everybody's money. We must question it. But most importantly, is that even at the backyards of uh, the president, uh, that is central uh, area of Kenya, and in the Rift Valley, there's still voter apathy. That is why we realize more voters this time around. Although there was, those, those no, there is, uh, according to the figures that have been released, uh, yes. speak otherwise. They speak. Uh, yeah, after after the, the figures have been massaged, you and me know that. <laughs> remember, remember when the deputy president was having his first interview with the CNN, and um, he insisted on the telling being at 7.5 million. And uh, the lady who's interviewing him insisted on 6.5 because that is what was officially on record. Mm -hmm. After all research with the IBC, it was 6.5. But the deputy said, no, it's 7.5. 24 hours later, that's what we have. Something serious is going on in this country. And we need to pull together and address this thing and talk openly about it. Others, you know, take the, the, the right direction. Yes, I'll agree with what the engineer is saying he is my brother and we and we don't fight actually our viewers should know that after this we are going to have a cup of tea so let them if they are slaughtering themselves each other there they, they need to know that we, we don't fight we need to address what is happening but first of all we need to get to a point how do we address it mm -hmm. let's finalize this thing we've already used money billions we can go back Let's, let's finalize this thing, let's swear in the president, and let's start a new process now. No, starting a new process, would you the be process, okay with the starting the a new process of, of 90 days? Said, using the legal means, members of parliament, me, if I have any petition, let me do it and present it to the National Assembly. My friend, 
uh, the members of Jubilee, members of uh, uh, Alliance for Real Change, DIDA, the religious uh, movement, and all that. Let's present petitions and present the parliament and say, we have seen what happened in 2013, we've mm -hmm. seen what happened in 2017, and we don't want it to be repeated again in 2022. So mm -hmm. to avoid the repeat in 2022, let's, let's amend either the Constitution via referendum or the Act of Parliament, the, the, the Election Act. Let's change it. And this time round, we will not pull some elders outside Parliament to agree among themselves on what is right. This time round, since we've done that ever since 1992, and it has not worked, this time round, let us go to Parliament and allow Parliament to change the Constitution. Then come back to us, Kenyans, and ask ourselves, are you comfortable? Let's change but even I, I feel for someone who's used, like 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 Laila Amaro Dinga, who's used a lot of money, yeah? I feel that he'll still be jobless for the next five years. Let's change the constitution where it is not the winner taking it all, so that at least we can incorporate him, uh -huh. not, not necessarily in government, but he can be recognized, he can have an office where he will be addressing members of the press and all that as the official leader, recognized by the constitution. You know, right now we don't have a leader of the official opposition. He's not. So let's let's let, let change the constitution I, I'll, I'll urge parliament and immediately my, my, my president is sworn in let him um, bring in that amendment and recognize Raila Omolo Odinga as the leader of the official opposition possibly even give him an office and a few staff and a few chase cars and a few not you know, this time not a few <laughs> half -kate. give him a whole kam -kam keka and he will cool down Okay, do you believe that this is just an issue? Because uh, we've heard it from the NASA uh, team declaring again and again that this is not about them wanting to be uh, included into the government as a coalition. Nusum as they would call it. Uh, listening to him, probably that is exactly the narrative that I would think uh, he's trying to allude to. No, no, no. Okay. So, okay, fine. I know you didn't mean that. Right? Okay, now, probably what would you say would actually work going forward? When you're talking about uh, 90 days, because according to uh, Ray Lodinga, he says we need to have another election within 90 days. Mm -hmm. What would actually change under what environment? Because uh, are we going to get the election in 90 days under the same environment? Uh, two things are paramount here. One, uh, when my brother Jeremiah talks about let's share the president start a new page. <laughs> you know, what, what Jeremiah is saying, mm -hmm. here's a case where uh, you, you've, you've caught a thief, and uh, I'm careful as I use that word. But you say, okay, fine, uh, you, you've stolen my TV set, it's fine, you just go with it, but now, from now on, <laughs> I'm going to uh, make arrangements so that it's not possible for you to steal again from my home. That beats logic. When you find a thief, the thief must first of all surrender the stolen item. Mm -hmm. Then the thief must face the full force of the law and then life can proceed on like that. This election has been done uh, fraudulently. There's been a lot of irregularities that have marred this election. The reason why the IEBC chairman uh, of Fula Chebukati has been giving conflicting data on national television, oh, the turnout is 48%, it came to 33%. Right now, when, uh, when, when the chairman released the figures that you just read, his figures do not correlate to the percentage turnout. Okay? The figure of 7.4 something million out of the 19 point something million registered voters translates to about 37 if you do mathematics. As an engineer, one of my units of statistics. <laughs> but Wafula says that translates to 43%. You know, we cannot agree. You cannot sit down and say that in the whole of IEBC, we do not have one person who can just take a calculator and, and do simple fraction. 7.4 out of 19.5 times 100 comes to that 7 point something, not 43 point something. Something is totally wrong. Mr. Wafula is getting instructions from some quarters. They are confusing him every time. He's not having time to think through the instructions and he's embarrassing the institution. But back to your question. NASA stands for credibility. Uh -huh. In the past, we have seen um, Jubilee MP saying, Raila is opposed to the IBC, he's opposed to the police, 
uh, unit is opposed to everything, and they ask, how does he want to be president? How is he going to govern? Royal Odinga and at large NASA is looking at a Kenya where institutions work, where institutions are independent if they're supposed to be, and able to discharge their mandate without any interference. And when we say that there's going to be elections in 90 days, I want to take, to take that to the nearest bank, save for equity, but you can do consolidated down here. You, okay, 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 I'm not going to allow you to name brands here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, yes. I'm sorry about that, I didn't that. But there's going to be elections because Kenya deserves better mm -hmm. than what we had on the 26th. I know uh, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta is a gentleman. He is not going to allow himself to be sworn in after such a fraudulent exercise. For the record, I would have had no issue myself if the 3.5 million Kenyans that turned up to exercise their geographical and ethnic rights to vote on the 26th, if that was the vote that was tallied, the 3.5 million. Because Uru still would have had 98% of that, of the 3.5. If that is what was tallied and you are told 3.5 million people turned up, let's get a good excuse for it. This was a repeat election, the political temperatures were high, and Uru has gone 98%. Would have a very sweet discussion. Would you, would you, would you have, uh, would you have, uh, or rather, accepted uh, if uh, the vote turnout was uh, say that the number is three point five? Would you have accepted and uh, allowed the process to go in and he being swearing, sworn in as a president? We would have had a better discussion than what we are having today. The discussion we are having today is embarrassing to us as a, as a nation. We are embarrassing ourselves uh, through the international media. Other countries are beginning to see us as people are not serious. Why do we, when, when you know, the, the biggest fight here, my brother, has been credibility of elections. We as NASA feel that uh, Jubilee manipulated results in August 8th. Now when Jubilee is competing against itself, so to say, President Uru Kenyatta and uh, the Deputy President William Ruto, who are competing against themselves. I don't want to put it there, Baba put it, that it is Uru versus Kenyatta. Why do we still have to massage the results again? Why can't we now just have the real thing for once? I'll, 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 I'll put it this way. NASA is not sincere. Mm -hmm. You asked my brother a question here, which is taking us round, because he says the, the 3.5. He, but asking him whether he would have accepted when it's 3.5, he would say we would have a better discussion. Yes. You know the better discussion? The better discussion would have been, where is the 8 million? They would not be saying, and they would be asking up, right? the 3.5 <laughs> million, they would be asking where is the 8 million? I will put it very clear. Laila Molo Odinga, will only accept the results of any election even when he is declared the winner. Even in party elections, and you know, he, he, he came here in 1994 to do a Fort Kenya election. Oh, the Thika Stadium. Thika. And uh, you know, he, he, this guy, he cannot accept so, okay, fine. an election. The only th time Laila Omoro Dinga will accept the results of an election is when he wins. And again, I'll say this, and I'm challenging members of the NASA coalition. They have governors. They have members of parliament and MCS. I'm accept, I'm a, actually, what I'm expecting from them today is to resign en masse. And I'll tell you one thing. That is when you'll know these people are businessmen playing around with our minds. They are still getting salaries, and they are still supporting NASA with their, with, with their contributions, you get, because they are not sincere. So that is what I'm saying. Let us swear in the president. Let the president go ahead and call all these people together. Let us heal the nation. And uh, we will give like clearly, a whole clearly, another chance uh, in 2020. Listening to the deputy president, <clears throat> listen to the deputy president and uh, uh, to the statesman, uh, state house rather, uh, spokesman in a different uh, interview, Listening to both of them, I don't hear that tone of 
reconciliation, reaching out, and like you're saying, trying to talk to Red yes. Odinga. The, question, the, yes. word, the words of uh, Deputy President, according in a quarter in a different quarters, was that we can only discuss about his retirement. Now, I'm just wondering, when we're talking about healing the nation, yes. we had the discussion, uh, we had uh, Red Odinga saying he would want to, he's ready to be the president. But then we had the president say he can only meet the president, I uh, can only meet Raila Odinga after the election. Yes. When we talk about him meeting Raila Odinga after the election, let's look at the masses as well. What are we talking, what are we uh, doing to actually reach out to the people? When we reach out to Raila Odinga, will we have reached out to the entire nation, the nation that uh, did not vote? No. Uh, I support the deputy president when he says we can only talk to Raila because uh, this election is not about who we guy cannot. This election is about William Samoa Ruto. Okay. For one reason. Actually, the boycott of Raila Amolo Dinga is not about stopping Urumu Igai Kenyatta. The boycott of Raila Amolo Dinga is about stopping William Samoa Ruto in 2022. The issue of uh, bringing in a caretaker government and a government of national unity is not about his love for the nation. It is about him punishing the person who he thinks made him not win in 2013. In 2013, we know, we all know, uh, William Samoa Ruto went to Laila Amoro Dinga, they held a discussion. He had not yet decided who he will work with. Mm -hmm. After leaving the discussion, the next day he was in state hall. He, he went to uh, Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta and they met and he agreed, I'm going to work with Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta because that's the person who gave him a better deal. We don't want to say the deal because we know we are not, we, we, do, we didn't attend to it and we don't know what they agreed. But I will tell you one thing. Laila Molo Dinka, that is why he, he, he doesn't mention, he does not mention, and I don't think, he, he, and if you want to know this election is about Ruto, he is a man who is answering all questions about this election. He is a man when, 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 <coughs> when IABC calls in a meeting, he is a man who attends the meetings on behalf of the coalition. And uh, William Samoy Ruto, having come from a hustler to that level, he has to fight because of where he is headed, the 2022. And that is why he keeps on saying, So he, mm -hmm. it's a game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a game. And Ruto, Ruto, Ruto wants, knows, by having a Nusumkate government, I will be number three or four. Okay. And my chances of ascending to power I, I don't know. will I don't not know. work. I don't know. I, I'm uh, listen, I, I've actually listened to him, and I don't know if that is how far we've gone. Because uh, looking outside there, we've seen uh, pockets of Kenya going into violence. We've seen Kawangware uh, recently. We've seen uh, even uh, uh, the governor from Kisumu and the governor from uh, Kericho coming up to try and create uh, and uh, uh, preach peace because of the violence that had erupted at the border of Kisumu Kericho. I don't know, is all this just happening because of trying to stop a William Ruto's presidency in 2022? And like he's saying, this is not about Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh -huh. I think uh, my brother's explained a lot. Uh, Uni failed to say is, uh, that is, it could be the deputy president who is behind all these fun imaginations you're seeing at, at, at the IBC for the same reasons that he has explained. Uh, but I would not really uh, delve into that because um, five years can be quite a long time. It can also be quite a short time. And a lot of things are bound to change. There's nothing that is cast on stone. Kenyans are the ones who decide who becomes president. Um, the main thing here is how can we unite this country? Because as it is, we are seriously and severely divided along our ethnic lines. But the feedback we get from State House, the feedback that we get from the, those who hold the instruments of power, is that of chest thumping, arrogance, and what I would just call plain disregard 
of the national unity that we as Kenyans have enjoyed. It is very unfortunate for Kenya that at such a time like this, we have a president and a deputy president who do not care what happens to this nation. All the case, we must cling to this, uh, cling to this power. And they have uh, carefully choreographed a narrative. And I want to speak this uh, to my uh, Kikuyu brothers, um, my brothers from the central Kenya. There is a, a carefully choreographed uh, narrative that the only way that their interests can be catered for is if a Kikuyu is president. And this is a pure lie. It is not true. The people who benefit from the presidency is a president, his family, and a clique of people who are close to him who help him present. You've, uh, you've chosen to go directly to a certain community. Is that, are you, are you trying to probably profit that community as the no, cause of the problem? I'm, I'm not. It's in fact, the community is not the cause of the problem. I'm just trying to speak to the community because I know many could be watching that it is a lie. No one, in fact, Jeremiah, he will tell you, Jeremiah is my friend uh, for a long time, and he's Kikuyu. Ask him how many times he's going to take tea with Uru Kenyatta since Uru Kenyatta became president in 2013. It's not possible. He's not been able to be there. In fact, if you go to the gate of State House and, and, and greet those guys in Kikuyu language, you'll just be sent away as much as I would go there to greet them in Luo. What I'm saying is that we've reached a point where our leaders have failed, and we, the citizens, must now take the bull by its horns. I am a law from Kisumu County, same as Abu County to be precise, okay? And I live and work in Nairobi, I do business in Nairobi. My brother here comes from, uh, is it Kinamob? Nyandaro. He from Nyandaro County. He lives in Nairobi, he does business in Nairobi. We must have a honest discussion. Our leaders up there have failed. When Ruto gets opportunity to speak, uh, the deputy president to speak the media, he says, "I can. The only thing we can discuss with Raila is retirement." That's really insulting to the to the followers of Raila, of Raila Odinga. And as you can see from the results, IBC is struggling to make anything meaningful from there, getting 7.4 million out of 19.5 million, meaning there's a whooping 12 million people out there. These are the followers of Raila Odinga. <laughs> okay. uh, 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 I'll put it this way. <laughs> clearly, clearly. Uh, the followers of Laila Odinga are not the 12 million. And we will not look at the 12 million. Uh, that, is, that, is, that is the narrative, narrative that they wanted to use. That the people who will not vote and actually, I will tell you this. If I was the one there, I would have shown them what to do. Only that they wanted a clean win, and they've gotten a clean win. If I was the one up there, near the Jubilee, and near who is who in power, I would have ensured that the 12 million reads on the portal. Anyway, <laughs> but now, now Uhuru Kenyatta, that's, that's Uhuru Kenyatta being, Uhuru, Uhuru Kenyatta being a gentleman, Uhuru Kenyatta being a gentleman, as my brother has said, wanted a clean win. So he is not afraid of the 7.4 million. He was even not afraid of 1.4 million, as long as it meets the constitutional threshold Jeremy, of at least 25 percent in there, half someone, the number. Someone was there added 4 million. So okay. you have done a, a worse job. I okay. was, I was, uh, I was let, at let, let, on I'd rather, I'd rather we go back I, I to had <laughs> an opportunity of visiting Bombers on yes. Friday. And everything at Bombers is clean. Clean. I saw guys coming in with their Form 34, whatever, those ones that... that the know, Form 34As and yes, Form 34 because we, that we, we don't want to have a problem again of opening the servers. So we, we instead of opening the server, is there a server? <laughs> instead of opening the server, yes. we will bring in now. This is the physical form, thirty four B and thirty four A, so that you don't have keep on telling us the server is functioning. Okay, gentlemen, I think we go back. Let's go back to the reconciliation bit because uh, I think you had started it very well, and uh, we would really want to now build on that narrative. How do we move on, especially to the citizens? I understand as politicians, probably, you've already put it very clearly that, hey, we can differ 
on policies. We can differ on opinions, but we don't go physical. Now, how come it's impossible to give that narrative to the commoners, to the Mwananchi, to the Wanjikos, to the Otienos down there, and for them to actually say, hey, by the way, it's true? Because of one thing, uh, if, if we, sh uh, and I will ask the media from today, one, give these people complete blackout. Who are we talking about? The politicians, because it is the politicians who are dividing Kenyans. Kenyans don't have a problem. Like where I live, my neighbor is, all my neighbors are from different communities that support the NASA coalition. We have never woken up at night to fight. Even when they feel threatened that uh, things may spill, I always give them hope. Should there need be, run to me, I'll offer you protection. But I have, taken, mm -hmm. I have taken cups of tea with members of the Luo community who tell me, I don't have a problem with Kikuyus. And we must also realize this. The Kikuyus don't have a problem with Luos, and Luos don't have a problem with Kikuyus. The contest between the Kenyatta family and the Jaramogi family should not spill to us. And these people, if today Raila Amolo Odinga and Uru Moigai Kenyatta happen to be in the same function, they will always address each other as my elder brother and my younger brother. We as Kenyans should take this way. This is a political contest. I should not and I will not agree myself to die because of the presidency of Uhuru Mbaigai Kenyatta. I will not agree and allow myself to kill because of the presidency of Uhuru Mbaigai Kenyatta. Yes, I support him. I'll celebrate if he is declared winner. But he has not, because they can also declare a court anyone else. So if he's declared winner, I will celebrate. Except Raila. Except Raila. Because he didn't <laughs> participate in the election. <laughs> so he and after that, I'll reach out to any other member. I want to do business. I want to visit Kisumu. I want to visit Homa Bay. I want to visit Migori. I want to visit Siaya. I want to visit Machakos. The same way I can visit Moranga. And I want, I want to bus do business with these people. And at the end of the day, Ask yourself this. Have you ever heard the people in Mudaiga fight? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard the people in Karen fight? They don't. Have you ever heard the people in Lovington fight? Have you ever heard a demonstration in Lovington? Have you heard a demonstration in Karen? Have you heard a demonstration in, in Mudaiga? Laila Moro Dinga lives in Karen. Uhuru Moigai lives in Lovington and I think he has a house in Mutaiga. If and when Raila Odinga, is, no, 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 William Ruto is, is, he is in Karen, even when he wants to uh, come and charge his people, he will always come to the slums. It is high time we ask ourselves, up to when will we agree to be used by politicians? Me, I want to use politicians not them using me. And there is one thing I do. I'm, I'm a believer in demos, and I have attended demos and all that. But I will not attend a demo with a view of destruction to property, but with a view of presenting a petition to a certain office, and that is it. So the, I think the best and the way forward right now is number one, even before, Kenyans should not wait for politicians to talk. I'm actually looking forward to living here with a, with a, with a Jubilee t-shirt and my brother here with a NASA t-shirt. And we walk up, we walk to Moranga and have a cup of tea. I'm looking forward to me and him walking in that, me in a Jubilee t-shirt and him in a NASA t-shirt. And we go to Seme and have lunch there and even invite the locals and we do a kambuzi. I'm looking forward to him, me going with him to my home area. Him, and he, he doesn't need to, to pretend that he is Jubilee. He comes in his NASA t-shirt and he still says, I am a believer and a follower of Raila Odinga, but this country is ours. Because today you will not convert the people who believe in Raila Odinga to become Uhuru 
die-hard supporters. It is not possible and it will not happen. You will not convert the people who believe in Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta to become the die-hards of Raila Odinga. It is not possible and it will not happen. The way forward, let us embrace each other and build this nation together. Okay. Uh, probably, gentlemen, even as we come to an end, uh, listening to you, oh, that almost looked like, uh, sounded like a closing remarks, but I still gave you another maybe a minute or so. But uh, probably just even as we wind up, uh, looking at the uh, process that we're going into, I understand probably the anxiety that was there before the election at least has eased up. At least people are worrying is there going to be an election or not. There was an election. You chose to call it an activity. Uh, but then it has been regarded as an election. And that's why we are waiting for, uh, for the results. <laughs> and uh, we respect the fact that uh, everyone would obviously look at it differently. The anxiety has gone down. We have an economy to build as well. Even as we look, uh, even if we're going to go to another 90 days, that's about three months. We need to really focus on building our nation right now. And that calls for tolerance, uh, and that calls for embracing each other, like you say. I don't know, what would be your message to the public? And uh, if possibly that, you can just turn and uh, look at the camera mm -hmm. so that you can speak directly to the viewers and tell them exactly your position and uh, what you think they should do going forward. Um, this, this would be my advice to my countrymen. On 24th of September uh, this year, the Germans went uh, to an election. The world did not hear much about it. And that is because the systems in Germany, the Germans worked so hard to make their systems work. In Kenya, we live together and enjoy each other's company for four years. But when it gets to the fifth year, some hell just breaks loose. Does it mean for the four years we pretend to love each other only to show our true colors on the fifth year? I don't want to agree with that. I know that for the four years that we embrace each other and work together, do business together, eat and work together on the streets of Gidurai, that is the real way. We as Kenyans are social, we embrace one another, we genuinely love one another and we care for each other. And that is why in our history, it's only in 2007-2008 that we nearly got into some civil strife. But Kenya has been regarded as an oasis of peace. And that is what is truly ours. What we see every five years is choreographed by politicians who do not want the systems to work so that they can get the reins of power for their own selfish gains. I want to speak to my fellow countrymen. NASA stands for credibility in all our systems of governance, and that is what we fight for. We will not possibly speak about uh, healing if we, in, we don't speak about truth and justice. We cannot get true healing if our systems are under the hands of a few individuals who want to manipulate it for their own gains. We must fix the systems, we must fix our justice system, we must speak the truth to one another, and then we can embrace one another. And to the top leadership, and especially those who hold the instruments of power at this time, it is high time that we, you realize that power is not eternal. I've heard a lot of people called the, um, this has been mentioned left at Sunday in public meetings that power becomes from, uh, comes from God, and that is the truth. Today you are in power, tomorrow you will be someone else in power. Can we speak the message that will bring people together? I would like to speak to uh, His Excellency the President Ultinata, have time and speak to Raila Odinga. The way you call him brother in public, speak to him privately in public, and let's bring this touch together because we belong together. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I mean, interesting, very, very interesting. I mean, came in as a very, 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 very strong politician. Now, now I'm hearing a very change of tone, and that's exactly the reality. We need to realize that the truth of the matter is when these gentlemen go out there, they don't fight each other. They don't hold a dag against each other. They don't loot each other's property. They don't destroy each other's businesses. If anything, I'm sure they even go to each other for soft loans and... Uh, 
help each other out. But for you, I don't know why you get into wars. Let's just also have uh, an opportunity. I said that was almost like your last remark, but I would also expect you now to look at the camera and uh, straight and just tell the viewers what exactly we need to do as a nation, even as we seek to now build our economy and embrace peace. Uh, I will address my fellow citizens and tell you this. We have one nation called Kenya. This nation, we've built it. Our forefathers poured blood for us to get to where we are. We don't need any more blood to be poured. We need to build on the foundation that has been laid by our forefathers. We need to embrace each other. Your problem as a Kikuyu is not that Lu. Your problem as a Lu is not that Kikuyu. We need to come up together and refuse to be used by politicians for their own selfish gains. We need to hold them to account. We need to boycott some of these rallies and tell them we are tired. We need to force them to talk. To my brother Raila Molo Odinga, you may not be hearing this, but I know your supporters and your leaders are hearing this. I think it is time you dropped your hardline positions and reached out to Hurumwekai Kenyatta. I know both of you can have a, have a cup of tea and agree. Let's build this nation. After today, whoever will be announced as the leader, he will not bring you money in your house. He will only lead the nation. You need to get out, go out there and work. So forget about the politicians. Most of the politicians you're following today in those rallies, at the end of the month, they'll be taking 600,000, your money, taxpayers' money. You're following them, going to those rallies, and going home empty and hungry. And the person you'll go borrow food from, the person you'll go who owns a kiosk, the person you'll go who owns a shop, is the same, same person who you think comes from a tribe that is an enemy to you. Let's be wise. Let's reason. Let's forget. Let's stop this issue of being used by politicians. Let us come together as a nation and let's build this nation. When you go out there and someone tells you, let's go for rallies, let's do protests, ask yourself, how much do I, not even building your nation, how much are you building yourself? Let's come together. I'm looking forward to you, my brothers, who come from a Lu community, having, sitting together and having fish together. It is my prayer that this weekend, and I'll tell my brother, Otieno, we travel to Kisumu and have fish, and I'll come in my Jubilee t-shirt, so that we can both know that it is not that t-shirt that has a problem. It is us as Kenyans who have a problem. Let's build each other. Let's forget these hardline positions. Let's build this nation. Let's continue being brothers and sisters. Your blood is red, the same case as mine. Thank you. All right, very, 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 very well said. Thank you very much, Tieno, yes. Engineer Tieno, for coming to our studios. Looking forward to hearing from you again. Sante Sana Jeremiah. Thank you. I mean, I don't know, you're headed to Bomas? Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you. If you are celebrating, celebrate with tolerance. If you are grieving, also do so with tolerance. At the end of the day, there must be winners, there must be losers, but the NASA still maintains, the NASA team still maintains, there needs to be credibility. We uh, will be following up and see what means they'll be using and how they're going to pursue that. And uh, the Jubilee says, hey, it's time to move on. It's time to build the nation. It's time to move on. We can talk about the things that have happened, but let's first move on. Whichever stand, whichever position, or whichever side you support, one thing is very clear. You as a person need to continue living, and we as a nation need to continue building ourselves as the symbol of unity and as the icon of Africa that we've always been. It's been a pleasure having you watching us the entire morning. My name is Veyula David. I'll see you again tomorrow.